How much was the rust a factor today? I mean, did that, uh, was it hard just playing for the first time after a couple of weeks? Yeah, I think that's always the case. I thought Holy Cross came out and played really well. I thought they executed their stuff really well. I thought they made some tough shots. Um, but I think the biggest thing is like they really just clogged the paint. Um, and we kind of tried to force some stuff early. We needed to move the ball a little bit more, get some back-to-back -back drives. Um, so I think that was the biggest thing is like don't force stuff into the paint when they're all just sitting there. And you know we learned for that. And then we had a really really good second quarter. Um, so I'm proud of us for you know ha finding a way to respond. Gabby got off to a good start shooting too. That helps. Yeah, yeah. It's always good to see Gabby knock down some threes. I think her energy is contagious when she can do that for sure. Kaylin, this crowd electric as always. Just kind of talk about this. And I know we didn't talk much mm -hmm. yesterday because there was two games hopefully to be played. But mm -hmm. how how big of a game is? just besides the Sweet 16, but being the last game here at Carver on Monday. Yeah, I think it's really exciting. I think this crowd was great. I think when Gabby hit that first three, it, the place about erupted. And um, I know they love Gab more than anything. When she's able to knock down shots, it gives us so much energy. And, you know, having these last two games in Carver is really special, getting to play in, this, in front of this crowd one more time. But also our crowd has been amazing on the road, every place we've gone this year. And, um, you know, I think I'm just very fortunate and going to be able to just try to soak it in uh, going forward. And um, it never gets old, for sure. Seems like the last few games I've seen a lot more of the shots that kind of rim in and rim back out for you. That was in the case in the big yeah. tournament. Saw a couple of them today. Yeah. Does that provide some frustration, or is that something that you've experienced a lot more in your career? I think there's a, you know, I think the best thing about that is like you, that's a good miss. Like that's not something you get frustrated over. Like that's just an unfortunate roll. And as a shooter, like that happens sometimes. But I think more than anything, like. It, it feels good off your hand. Like that's almost, it's a little frustrating, but at the same time, it's like, all right, that's a good miss. You know, that should have probably gone in, but just a tough roll. And as a shooter, you get those sometimes. So yeah. happens. I know you played with a different ball in the postseason. Does that play a factor at all? I mean, the ball feel a little bit No, I actually right? really like the Wilson ball, yeah. It seems like this team just tried to play physical. Do you pride yourself on being a physically tough player to kind of play that style of basketball as well? Yeah, I think everybody is going to be physical from here on out. That's just kind of how it goes. and. I honestly thought the refs called a few more fouls than I was expecting to. Usually at the, in the postseason, they don't really call much. I thought they kind of blew a tight game, but um, I think the biggest thing going forward is, like, you can't expect those calls. It's going to be physical no matter who we play. That's how it's always been in the postseason. You know, they're just not going to call it. You can't expect them to call it. Um, but I think it's also, like, I've seen physicality all year long. That's just how people guard me. They're going to be up in my space. They're going to be pressuring me. They're going to be holding me. So I don't think it's anything, like, I'm not used to by any means. When, uh, when Hannah wasn't feeling well and then had to, had to sit out, um, Patty really seemed like her confidence was there. Can you just start with how her confidence is sort of built to be ready to stop yeah. in moments like that? Yeah, I think Addie's just one of those players that has really just been working really hard and she knows her role. She knows what we need her to contribute. But also I think Addie just gives us a whole different dynamic than Hannah. Like they're so different, but they're both so good in their unique own ways. Um, and when, you know, coach was like, Hannah's not going to go in the second half, it, Addie didn't bat an eye. Like she was just ready. That was her moment. And I think her length bothers a lot of people. Um, and that's what you're going to need, especially if we want to reach our goals in this tournament. And it's, there's a lot of teams that have a lot of size. So I think Addie's one of those players that can really add a whole different dynamic for us. But also Hannah is really great too. Hannah runs the floor better than any four or five in the country. And I really believe that. And um, But I thought Addie gave us some great minutes. But um, she should have that confidence. If, if you remember, like she started our game at cr the crossover at Kinnick. Like she's been in these moments before. She played last year behind Mon. And um, I don't think Addie really shies away from this at all. And, you know, she went out there and really gave us a good boost. Caitlin, as you look back at like, the last year and a half, mm -hmm. you and the team have like been on this rocket ship. Mm -hmm. Like, were there moments that stand out where you felt specifically like this is different than it used to be? Like women's basketball right now feels different. Oh man. Um, I don't know. There's been like a lot of little moments, I think. Um, I think just the crowds at our games, but also just like the people screaming and like wanting our autographs. Like, like people just scream my name constantly. And I think that's something that really never gets older. It's something you never take for granted. I think it's cool to see how it's evolved. Like when I first started this, when I was a freshman, like we couldn't even use the March Madness branding. And now to see this and really it's, it's just taken a whole nother level. And I continue it. I expect it to continue to grow this year. And I think that's the coolest thing for myself. Was this, did you get what you, you guys were hoping out of the first? Because sometimes the first round games are mm. clunky mm. for teams. Like LSU didn't play particularly well yeah. yesterday. Um, all things considered, did you feel like hey, this was a, a good way to open the tournament? Yeah, I think it was definitely a little clunky at times. Mm -hmm. I thought 
we definitely showed some rust in the first quarter for sure. Um, but I think the best thing was like we responded in the second quarter. Like we played really good basketball in the second quarter, and I think our third and fourth quarter, like we gave up too many points in the third. Um, but our fourth quarter, I thought our zone defense was pretty good, and obviously they made some shots there at the end when both teams had kind of subbed a little bit. But um, I think there's things to be proud of. I thought we could have executed our offense maybe a little bit better, but they were really, really clogging the paint. Um, and if that's what teams are really going to do for now, I think our shooting, our shooting is something that we really need to rely on, but also expect that, like, kick the ball a little faster. I think we were just a little late on our reads tonight, but um, like I said, I thought we responded really well in the second quarter and were able to, you know, have a significant lead. And also I think um, you saw how fast we're able to go on a run. I think we went on a 10-0 run in the blink of an eye and forced them to call a timeout. I think that's one of the most dangerous things about our team is we can really put up some offensive numbers in a short amount of time. And um, I think that that can be useful going into the rest of the tournament and probably other teams don't like seeing that either. Yeah, sorry if you already asked this, but going yeah, into go Monday, yeah. like, how do you balance sort of appreciating that it's your last game here, but also yeah. treating it like any other game? <laughs> it's hard. I think, this. no, no, no. Okay. Um, I think it's, uh, honestly, I feel like it's very similar to senior night. Like, I had emotions and like I knew this was kind of the end, but at the same time, like I'm so competitive and so locked in on the game, like you don't really feel it until afterwards. And I think over the last of the course of the last week, um, it's really begun to start feeling like this is kind of the last arrive. Maybe didn't feel so much like that maybe in um, senior night or the or the Big Ten tournament, but I think now like you're fighting for your life. Like you're only guaranteed one more game. You're only guaranteed one more practice and. Um, I think that'll be the biggest thing, but I don't think it'll be anything like really too emotional for me until I walk off the court that last time. And um, I think more than anything, I'm just going to try to soak it in and enjoy it because, you know, I have the beauty of knowing this is my last time and I get to, I got the opportunity of playing my NCAA tournament here and um, just enjoy that crowd because they've been incredible over my, you know, three years of having fans and it's never anything I've taken for granted. Caitlin, you were talking about Women's March Madness. What games are you watching right now? Oh man, honestly, like when I have time to watch, I ha I just have all the games on. Like I never am like specifically watching anything. I I watch the men's March Madness too. Obviously, it's gonna be hard to watch over tomorrow. Like we're gonna be here for quite basically the entire day. We were here a lot of yesterday, but you know I. You're rooting for your Big Ten teams. You root for your conference. Um, but also, like, you just love the competition. Like, you love these games. That's what makes it so fun on the men's and women's side. Um, and I think, obviously, as we get into the round of 32, it's going to just become even more and more competitive, and that's what makes it more, so much fun. But um, I wish I had more time to just sit down and stare at the TV all day because it's so much fun. So I'm jealous of everybody else, but I'm lucky enough I get to prep for another game. Maybe this is a better question for a couple nights from now, but what's the biggest message you want to deliver to the fans heading into your final home game that you're going to play here at Carver Hawkeye? I think the biggest thing is just thank you, and I'm grateful um, for these three years I've had, but even four. Like, they supported us even when they weren't able to walk in the doors, but um, a lot of these fans have been supporters of the Iowa Women's Basketball Program before I got here. Obviously, we've brought in some new ones, and I hope they continue to support this program. The girls deserve it. Coach Bluter deserves it. Um, and I know they will. Um, but I think the biggest thing is, like, just their support of women's basketball. Like, we're proud of them. They should be proud of themselves for everything that they've done to help grow this game. And, um, you know, I'll miss getting to play in this arena uh, more than anything. You know, it's been it's been a special ride. There's a clip. People think your dad was coming. No, I was yelling at the ref. I already saw. What, so what it's was crazy. really going on there? Because mm -hmm. I, like, I'd like to clear up what really happened. <laughs> well, I was so. getting frustrated at the ref. People thought I was talking to my dad, which was yeah. crazy. I was not talking to my dad. <laughs> was, he telling, was he telling you that? Oh, I don't. Really, I, I have no idea. Oh, okay. um, he probably, he, he was probably agreeing that? with me. You know <laughs> him. He's probably like, hey. Uh, but no, I saw does, that. Does he, ever, that. does he ever say anything like during game like, hey, calm down to you, or is he gonna... usually just on your on your? On oh your side no, he definitely tells me to calm down sometimes. But I think the best thing about my dad is like he's the most chill person, but when he played, like he was the same fiery competitive <laughs> right. person that, that I am. So like I love him to death. Like he's always been my biggest fan. He was my first coach. Um, but I think he knows how I'm wired better than anybody. Yeah. So um, that guy has my back and I love him to death. But yeah, I think it just shows kind of what camera angles can do sometimes. Right, they create their own stories, so. Yeah. <laughs> Does, do you ever look up to him? Like, I, there's so much going on, but do you, there are still times you look up to him particularly? Honestly, I, the only time I really look at him is before the game. We look at each other, mm -hmm. I give him a head nod, he gives me a head nod, and it's like, let's go. I think that's like something cute that we share and we always have. And um, I don't know if he's really missed, I think he's maybe missed one or two of my college games. Like, he's always been there for me, so. Um, yeah, it's, it's been special. I see you get the little heart sign after the game. Is that yeah, I do that to my family too. Okay. Yeah.
Throw this you, up, uh, Tom. Uh, you going Bruce Lee's on Monday? I might have to, now that you say that. These are like, <laughs> yes. these are Bruce Lee's too, just a different colorway, so. Uh, okay. when, yeah. when in the day but, yeah. do you pick your game day shoe? When I walk in for practice, I usually, well, I usually know a few days in advance because I always practice in them the day before. Um, but yeah, I wanted to do these ones, but. The Bruce Lee is, it's like my like Mike shoe, so I love those <laughs> They're things. They're the March shoes. Yeah. I'm sorry you don't remember this, but what was the bar you used to get into? Wilson, same one. So you're yeah. okay with that? And what do you, and yeah. you're using the Nike? Yeah. 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 Usually yeah. usually Nike here, yeah. Okay, that's what I just Wilson and Nike, yeah. The uh, Holy Cross players were really sort of starstruck about the idea of playing with you. Mm -hmm. Once that game actually starts, are you, are you guys just competing, competing, or are they still... Are, are they treating you a little bit differently? No, I think it's all competing. I think that's exactly what you would expect from somebody. That's what I would expect if I was in their shoes, too, and that's what I would do. And um, Like I said, I thought they competed really, really hard. I think you got to give them a lot of credit. They've had a great year. Um, they ran some really great action. They're well coached. Um, so they should be really proud of themselves, hold their heads high. Um, they came in here. They didn't shy away from the crowd. They didn't shy away from the competition. And they gave us a good battle. They tested us. Um, they made us a little frustrated at times. But, um, yeah, I don't think it was any starry eyes or anything. But, no, it was fun to get out there and play and brush off a little rust. And, you know, we have another one to prepare for at this point in the season. You know, all you care about is you win when the final buzzer goes off. We've seen a lot of kids that are Caitlin Clark fans, but uh, we don't often hear another coach whose daughter, she admits, are big Caitlin Clark fans. Yeah. Was that a new one when you heard her say how big of Caitlin Clark and her kids were? <laughs> yeah, I think it's not always something you really encounter too much. So uh, that was super special. And I know she had her kids down there watching uh, warm-ups and stuff, and they were adorable. And I'm sure they'll turn out to be really good hoopers. So um, that was cute for sure.